they saw it primarily here and now in this life. They saw it in the strength of arms, in the marching of armies. They saw it in the acquisition of gold and silver and power, prestige. <clears throat> but the Messianic Kingdom, the real victory, the greater victory that supersedes even the expectations of any of us, is something far different, something far greater, something that goes beyond our even our ability to understand. Because in Jesus, the victory that we have is over all those things that hinder us in this life, over fear, over death, over sin. You see, Jesus Christ brings to each and every one who will but receive it, who will take hold of the Messianic kingdom in the form of the palm branch, you see. It means that we take hold of it, just as the people in the crowd waved the palm branches. That meant that they thought the Messianic kingdom was theirs. The real messianic kingdom, the real victory, all those things that have for us go beyond the confines of this life. In Revelation 7, in Revelation 7, we see in the book of Revelation a view of those that have taken hold of the messianic kingdom. And the book of Revelation, again, written in apocalyptic language, written in a style of writing to convey something to us that there really are no words, no words in any language of men to convey. And the book of Revelation, you'll see as you go through it, you'll see worship segments, periods of worship in the book of Revelation, and then you see Jesus Christ revealed ever deeper, ever greater. There's worship, and then there's revelation of Christ. You see that throughout the book of Revelation. Wherever there's a segment of worship, you will see Jesus Christ introduced or revealed in a greater way. See, the people in the crowd 2,000 years ago only saw Jesus as a human deliverer come to deliver to them an earthly kingdom, the things of this life. But Jesus is so much more than that. In Revelation, Revelation 7, verse 9, John writes, After this I looked, and before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hand, and they cried out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. See, people from all nations, the Messianic kingdom did not belong only to Israel. Remember, the people in that crowd thought that God was going to restore Israel, an earthly kingdom here and now. But the Messianic kingdom is beyond just one nation, one people, one language. It is people from all all nations, all languages, who are holding the palm branch. It says that salvation belongs to our God. Remember the cry, Hosanna, it means save us now. We want salvation on our time and in our terms, but salvation belongs to God. It is in God's providence, in God's sovereignty, how and when these things occur. It just doesn't mean it comes from him. It means that he oversees salvation. It belongs to him. And how that messianic kingdom is experienced, it is all under his providence. It belongs to him. Not a desire on the part of the people, this great multitude, to control what God does as the people in the crowd 2,000 years ago. Salvation belongs to God. That means it's under God's sovereignty, rule, and power. That we do not dictate to God the terms of the Messianic kingdom. The people in the crowd 2,000 years ago attempted just such a thing. To control and dictate to Jesus how he would behave. They had earthly expectations that he did not fulfill. You see, they thought the salvation was theirs to control, to lead, to oversee. 
And they saw it as belonging only to Israel. To one nation. To one people. But here in this great multitude. Those who have hold of the palm branches. Those that have taken hold of the messianic kingdom. Are from all nations. They have all experienced the victory that is in Christ. For all of us. All coming to us from him through who he is. In Revelation 19, Revelation 19, we see the fulfillment. We see the fulfillment of what Palm Sunday only hinted at. The Palm Sunday only played out in a limited way. We see the coming of the Messiah. You see, they thought the Messiah was coming there in their time and in their pro, in their determination and in their will, in their nation. But here we see when Jesus Christ rides in, not just into our lives, but into the stream of human history. Revelation 19. And again, we see worship and we see another revelation of who Christ is. Revelation 19, verse 11. John writes, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True, and with justice he judges and he makes war. See, he sees Jesus as that victorious Lord and Savior, the one who has accomplished all things for us, riding in on that symbol of victory, that white horse. Because in the ancient world, the white horse was a symbol of victory. Roman generals would ride ahead of their armies into a conquered city, dressed all in white. You see, they understood the symbology. They understood that it was describing Jesus as that one that is victorious. And you see, Palm Sunday only hinted at that as Jesus rode upon the donkey with the colt that walked alongside that colt that was born from that donkey. We see the fulfillment of that here in verse 14 of Revelation 19. Then the armies which were in heaven following him, riding on white horses dressed in fine linen, white and clean. You see, these that are on those white horses are those who share in the victory of Jesus, who have been caught up in his wake of victory, In the same way that that colt was born out of that donkey. That tells us that our victory is born out of the victory of Jesus. You see, the colt represents our victory. We ride upon that small colt that walked in that procession. That's our little victory that we share in Jesus. That's born out of his great victory over all things. Palm Sunday looks ahead to the Messianic kingdom and the victory over all things. Over anything and all things that would hinder, limit, restrain, restrict, or encumber our relationship with Almighty God. A Savior that has come to clean our relationship with the great God up. That clears the temple courts. A God with his own agenda and his own purposes who does not condescend to our desires, but a God who will bring us great victory ultimately. And ultimately we all will experience it, and all of it caught up in the wake of his glorious victory when we enter eternity. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you, eternal God, for all that we have in Christ, the victory that is ours, that victory that we share in. And we pray, dear God, that we would in all things rely, trust, and hope only in him. We thank you and we praise you for our glorious Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.